So today's video is going to be a little bit different than the regular clothing hauls and try on videos that I usually do. Instead, I want to share with you guys some of the lessons that I've learned in my first year as a freelancer. So for those of you that don't know, I am a freelance videographer. I usually create short promotional videos for people and organizations and I really only started taking this seriously after graduating college. I have a degree in film and media so videography is something that I'm really passionate about pursuing as a career path. Just in this past year alone, I feel like I've learned so much about videography and what it means to be a freelancer and how being a freelancer is actually pretty different than being employed at a regular job, like a company, for example. On the outside, it kind of seems like freelancing is this like glamorous thing where you feel empowered to work for yourself, you're your own boss, you get to set your own schedule, and you make tons of money working with all of these different clients. I aspire to reach that level someday, but I do know that it's going to take a lot of work in order to reach that goal. Like I said, I've only been doing freelancing for about a year, and in that time, I feel like I've made so many mistakes, which is why I want to share what I've learned with you so that you can maybe avoid making some of those same mistakes that I did. So with all of that being said, here are the five things that I learned in my first year as a freelance videographer. Okay, starting off with number one, which is save money for taxes. This is so important. So as opposed to like a regular job where you have a W-2, your job takes the taxes from your paycheck for you and submits it on your behalf. When you're a freelancer, you don't really get that. You get the full paycheck and from there you kind of have to subtract your own taxes. So do not think that when you get paid, you get that full amount because you don't. That amount actually includes your taxes. So you still have to calculate how much taxes you're gonna be taking away from that full amount, if that makes sense. Just because you don't understand how taxes work or don't feel like you have a good sense of it does not mean that you should avoid it completely. I get that it's super overwhelming. I've been there. I am still kind of there because I don't really understand it fully. But if you just avoid it and just don't save any of your money at all, there is gonna come a time where your taxes are due and you're just not gonna be able to pay because you didn't save up prior. Um, so don't put yourself in that position. Save at least like 20 to 35% of each paycheck. Set that money aside and just wait until you file your taxes. Um, it's better to kind of overestimate how much taxes you're going to be paying and then to underestimate and then just not have enough money when the time comes. So just save the money and pay your taxes on time. So number two is to have a solid contract and to prioritize clear communication between you and your client. If you're just starting out and don't have any contract whatsoever, I would recommend looking up like different templates and seeing um, what other people have within their contract. Just pull the pieces that work for you and it does not have to be perfect because you're going to be updating this contract as projects go along and based on your needs for future projects. Essentially, you just want something that's going to cover your bases when working on a project with a client. It also establishes a sense of professionalism and sets the tone for a clear line of communication between you and your client and just gets you both on the same page. So number three, establish guidelines around revisions. So this one kind of goes hand in hand with my previous point about having a solid contract. You need to have guidelines within your contract around how you handle revisions. For me, one of the first projects that I worked on, I was not clear at all how I handled revisions. So when I handed over the final product to the client, I thought I was done with the project. I thought I could move on with my life, but no, they hit me with, actually, can you change this, this, and this? And my heart just sank. I was like, are you kidding me? I poured everything that I had into that video and I thought I was like completely finished. But going back to my contract, I realized that I had nothing in there about revisions or how I handled revisions. So I had to basically make all of the changes that they wanted and correct everything that they wanted in that video, which ended up adding two extra months to the project. Moral of the story is to set your limits around revisions within your contract. 
If not, some clients may try to take advantage of you and just make you do a ton of extra work that you're not being paid for. Personally, what I do is I just start charging for revisions after a certain time limit. So for example, after an initial three hours of revisions that I do, anything over that, they're gonna have to pay this much per hour. And I found that clients are more likely to take their revisions a lot more seriously if they know that they're paying for it. Okay, so number four is know your price and know your worth. Especially when you're starting out, I feel like it can be really hard to set your rate just because you feel like you don't have that much experience and you don't know what you should be charging in the first place. And I totally felt that when I first started out, I did not know what to set my rate as. I didn't know what my work was worth. And I would even feel guilty like talking to clients and telling them like, oh, this is how much the project is gonna cost just because I did not feel very confident in my own work and I just didn't know what the value of my work was worth. But all of this really comes with experience, so you really need to factor in how long you've been working on your skills, what kind of equipment you have access to and know how to use, what kind of software programs you know how to use, how fast and efficiently you're able to produce the work, and of course the overall outcome of your work. I'm still figuring out and tweaking my rates, but one payment model that I've been using is to set a half day rate, a full day rate, and then just charging per hour um, based on how many hours you are going to be editing that video project. Okay, and number five, assume that you will spend at least double the amount working on a project. This is something that I'm noticing is pretty common, or at least in my video projects. Like I'll have a client say that they want a video done by a certain time, and then I'll hand over the video, and then they'll have request after request of revisions, and that just pushes back the deadline like weeks and even months sometimes. I actually just hopped into a project that I thought was gonna take two weeks, and it's been way past two weeks, and I'm still working on it. And it's just pushing back so many other things that I could have been working on, and it's just taking up a lot more time than I had initially expected. So before getting into a project, ask yourself if you can spend double the amount of time working on that project. If you know you can't, then maybe just consider passing on that project or just being very explicit with your client about your own deadlines. So those are the top five things that I learned in my first year as a freelance videographer. And if you're also a freelancer, comment below and let me know what your biggest mistake was and what you learned from it. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.